Hi there. My name's Peter Eastway and I'm with photographer Dr. Les Walkling. Les, thanks for coming along. My pleasure. Les, I've got a photograph taken in the Stirling Ranges by your good self. And <laughs> as you know, we were there together. And I was looking around about 180 degrees the other way. And I wondered why you didn't share this amazing photograph with me. Pete, you'd already nailed the shot. So I thought I'd better have a look at what was looking at us when we were taking these images. And, and uh, there was this most magnificent, dramatic scene watching us. Uh, I, I, how could I not, uh, not capture Tell that as well? Tell me about it. Tell me. What, 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 what is it that you see in there? Well, the forest uh, gives way to the cultivated land, and this is our industry. These are our fields. This is our food. Uh, these are canola fields. And I was just, just overwhelmed by the sense of how small our industry is against the galactic scale of nature. And in terms of small and scale, I mean, the detail, it's just, you know, there's so much detail, so much fine detail in there. How, what sort of camera are you using? How do you achieve that? Of course, I'm photographing with my 200 megapixel Hasselblad. But don't forget, these are 1.83 meter wide prints. These are large public statements. So, of course, I need those, those pixels. So, you've got the picture back. Um, you've taken it into your computer. How are you post-producing? Are you using Photoshop? I mean, wh wh what's, what's your approach? Initially, I, I use the Focus software from Hasselblad because that gives me complete and utter control the raw over the raw processing. And then I'm into live picture and, and, and Photoshop to do, to do the post-processing. And I can, looking at the clouds there, I mean, the clouds have got a yumminess, a, a strength about them. They're quite, uh, quite amazing <laughs> clouds. I don't remember them being exactly <laughs> like that, though, Liz. Could you talk me through those clouds? They felt like that. <laughs> That's how they felt. But when I looked at the raw data, they weren't quite that, uh, that v voluminous. So, yes, there's two skies in here. But when you say there are two skies, I mean, you're... They were actually there, though, weren't they? Is that right? Or was oh, this yeah. taken at another place? Was no, 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 no. Uh, they, these are maybe four or five minutes apart. I've just filled the sky in with a little more volume, a little more presence, um, uh, just composited in, in, in Photoshop. And the colours down there in the fields, I mean, they have to be close to 100% saturation. <laughs> I mean, there's so much yellow and green in them. Is that, is that what it's about? I mean, well, well, are you fully saturated? No, no, we'd be getting close. Don't forget these magnificent printers and papers of ours these days and these ink sets have an extraordinary colour gamut. Uh, but no, those patches of sunlight, they were glowing. Uh, but don't forget, that's us down there, Pete. That's our industry. That, that's our home. That's our farm. Uh, uh, so they, they need to be the centre of attention. So in terms of getting the colour the way you want it, in terms of getting the neutrality of the clouds, mm. Mm. you're looking at a, a monitor um, that monitor has to be pretty accurate, I would imagine. Oh, I have to be working on a calibrated monitor. Um, I've got my ASO Color Edge, I've got my Spider, and I'm calibrating it to perfection so that I can trust faithfully what I see on the screen is a true and accurate representation. But also so I can see the, s the f most subtle differences in color. I can even see the difference in the color of one paper stock compared to another. And in terms of the paper stock, etc., you're going from your monitor to the paper. So that requires another profile, I imagine? Well, as we move through the workflow, as I work on my calibrated monitor, if the image starts to work for me, that is, returns me to the scene and, and, and actually starts to evoke the feelings that I felt that I've tried or hoped to capture, because I'm a printmaker, then straight away I'm making prints. And those prints, they're big. I mean, are you making little prints or big prints as you go? Well, I, I'm making test strips that are, that are full size because, you know, 60 inches by you know, half a metre, uh, because you've got to see how the image works at scale, how light raking across the surface of these beautiful papers work. But of course, without also accurately printing, uh, profiling my printer, then I, I wouldn't be able to trust what I see coming out of my printer. So I've got a calibrated monitor at the start of my workflow and a calibrated printer you know, towards the end of my workflow. So right through my workflow, I can trust the accuracy of the rendering. And then the size of the final print is basically reflecting your thoughts about the subject matter that you're creating? These are with? huge questions, questions of identity, of place and belonging. Th these, are not, uh, these are not personal. They're, they're, they're not of a community or a family. These are public statements. So they, the prints need to be bigger than my outstretched grasp. Les, there's an awful lot to it, isn't there? Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks, Pete.